about uh, the Hassan Campbell Big U situation, right? I haven't heard the salacious tape that I actually talked about that, that Hassan the leaked tape or whatever. I haven't heard that. All I know is Hassan Campbell has tapped into a different market. There are people out there who still remember Hassan Campbell when he first hit the scene. And as time goes on, that original group of people who were around to see him eight, nine years ago when he first surfaced are getting smaller and smaller. And the new people that he, the new market that he's tapped into is getting bigger and bigger. So sooner or later, people are actually going to forget that Hassan Campbell first hit the scene and started doing press conferences and appeared on local New York news stations because he was a advocate against uh molestation of children and he came out as a victim of Africa Bambata and he took the black community in New York by storm to the point where uh, internet media companies based in New York black owned arranged a press conference where he actually came out and was and everybody was like hey we've been hearing these stories about these demonic ritualistic practices in hip-hop now we actually have proof and Hassan Campbell was the symbol of that he was going to be the guy that was going to name names and it was like a revolution okay hip-hop has been around for 30 40 years there's been a lot of uh, allegations about certain individuals gatekeepers if you will like Bambada molesting hip-hop artists and children and um, you hear these conspiracies about the Illuminati, and Hassan Campbell was that guy who was going to tie everything together. But then eventually he dropped that. He used that as a marketing strategy so that he can become a YouTuber. And I understand that. That's a, that was a great strategy. He had all the eyes on him. But remember, when Hassan Campbell was getting interviewed initially, he was getting interviewed about that. So when did you get molested? How old were you? Why did you get molested? Why did you allow him to keep molesting you? You know, you, you said that you were a killer. As a teenager, you were a murderer. If you were murdering people, why were you allowing him to molest you? So he was basically going out there explaining all of these things. That was it. When you thought about Hassan Campbell, you thought about the guy who was a victim of Bambada. And he was an advocate for children. Then as time went on, he went at Sa Netter. Sa Netter is a guy that runs Black News 102, which is a conscious community channel. He's like the father of the conscious community, which is filled with a lot of scam artists, if I do say so myself, a couple of good people, and he went at him, he talked about his wife, his wife had cancer and beat it, and Hassan Campbell would say things like, I wish your wife would have died, and he would, and, and that, so basically, what I'm trying to say is Hassan Campbell is good at using marketing, marketing and promotion, at first he would do these alarming things that made you say, oh my god, why would he say that, why is he so crazy? Everybody thought that he had schizophrenia. Everybody thought that he had bipolar. His fan base went on this emotional roller coaster with him. Okay, they liked him because he was a victim of child abuse. And they would forgive him for being so mean and being so uh, impulsive. You know, whenever he would go off on Sanetta or whoever he was having beef with at the time, he would always go over the line, you know, and just say the most evil things, you know. I'm going to kill you. Your wife should have died. Your wife is a whore, even though she was she's a cancer survivor and she's like 70 years old, you know. And um, his, his fan base would forgive him because they knew that he was a victim of pedophilia and he probably had some PTSD as a result of that. But as the years went on, that audience dwindled. And the, and the audience that he has now grew. So these people that are fans of him don't even know him don't even know his story. They think that he's always been a gossip blogger. You know, they thought that, they think that he's been doing this forever. He strategically picked battles with certain people. My son, Sonetta, he went at Black Lives Matter. He would pick different enemies. You know, it's kind of like Hassan Campbell read the 48 Laws of Power over and over again, and he stuck at that part that tells you in order to to succeed you need to have an enemy. In order to be recognized, in order to be powerful, you must be seen slaying an enemy. So it's like that part of the book has always stuck with him. And he's very much manifesting that. And his latest enemy is Big U. So what he does is he picks battles with certain people and he just makes up things. That's what he's done historically. I don't know about this big... I haven't heard the tape, but I'm just telling you this is part and parcel for him. This is what he does. This is what he has been doing. But like I said, I'm a part of the audience that remembers him from nine years ago when he was doing these things, you know. But these new people, they don't know that. They ran into Hassan Campbell when he was already established and solidified as a gossip entertainment blogger. And 
he he was big when they found him. He had chains. He had on nice outfits. When he first started, he didn't have any of those clothes. He was living with his uh, girlfriend, the mother of his kids. He didn't work. He didn't have a job. He was basically like a, a house house guy. Like he would babysit the kids while his girl was at work. Now things have changed. Now he's generating a powerful income, and I do salute that. I mean, I'm not joking or trying to belittle him. I'm just telling you there's a there's an audience out there that remembers that. When Hassan Campbell would come on screen, he didn't have a chain. He didn't have but two he only had two hats or something like that. And he was like a regular dude, but he glowed up, got his money, and he's on to a new audience. And this new audience doesn't know what I know or the original people know. Because the original people, they probably you know, they, they just aren't speaking about it or they just were so small of a demographic that we can't, um, you know, the, the bigger audience that just discovered him overpowers us. But I'm just letting you know that, yes, he's always done this. You know, he's all, he's all, and, and he picks an enemy and he knows that if he can get that enemy to go back and forth with him, it'll boost his appeal. So, yeah, Hassan Campbell is a master at marketing and promotion. He did it with... I don't, and people are starting to question, was he ever molested or was that just marketing and promotion? Because <laughs> you never know with that guy. He's good at it. If you got a business and you want to you know, get some marketing going on, holler at Hassan Campbell. 